Fox 4 Sports here at 911 The Globe, and I'm Laura Hoover. For today, Tanner Camp is back in studio with the Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week and two other special guests. Also on today's show, a first look into the bullpen as spring season starts up for the men's baseball team. With Anthony Boltadaro, we take a look at that. All this and more here at 574 Sports. Welcome to 574 Sports. My name is Tanner Camp, and to my left here, we have sophomore track star Ollie Smith. He is this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. He is most noted. He broke the school record in the 600-meter race with a time of a minute and 23.20 seconds, which and ended up finishing fifth overall in the event. Ollie, first off, congratulations on this achievement. Thank you, Tanner. So how does it feel to be this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week? Well, at first, it was a shock to me because... Um, while I'm not really, I've obviously never been a track athlete and the reason I'm here is to play soccer mm -hmm. and to become Maple Athlete of the Week for soccer was like something I was striving for but in track I was never really striving for it, it was more to keep fit and now I've actually achieved that because I've broken a school record it's actually a really nice feeling, yeah. It's pretty cool. And as we know, you know, most noted for soccer, and this is your first year in track mm -hmm. and in your second meet after the, the trying event at Grand Valley State. You break your record, so very, very impressive. So knowing that this is your first season of track, what was your mindset? I mean, you talked a little bit about just staying in shape, but what, was there anything else? What was your mindset going into your first year of track ever, basically? Well, it, it changed throughout, but to begin with, my mindset was, like I said, just to get fit and work hard, get a bit stronger physically and like cardiovascularly. Um, and then as like, I started training and I realized that I'm actually, I've got potential, I could do s something pretty good in track. My mindset changed to, I was really motivated and I was really driven to like put all my effort into every session. So yeah, I think, at this point now, I'm very driven and want to work hard and hopefully get to nationals. And I mean, the hard work showed in soccer and it's definitely shown yeah. in track already and it's only the beginning for indoor and then we can't wait for the rest of track. So we're very looking forward to that. So how would you say, you know, even though it was an individual event, uh, you know, you got in practices, you got a feel for the team, you knew some of them of the other uh, members of that, but how would you say that in terms of uh, as a group of even just sprinters, long distance runners, but even just as a whole track and field yep. team, how would you say the chemistry level is, including, you know, just in practice, in, in meets, like in try, trying in Grand Valley State, how would you say that the chemistry is? The team chemistry is very good. Um, I would say practices, Monday to Friday, they feel like team practices. Even though you're running for yourself and to improve yourself, the main goal at the end of the day is to have that great team chemistry because that makes you better as an individual because you're part of that team. And you know, people you know think individual that you, it's not much of a team sport, but it really does. Oh, it really I does. Know, it really I helps. know that you, you mentioned, we talked a little bit about the support that you got when you were actually running. Mm -hmm. um, what, what were you, we talked a little bit again about this, what were you thinking as, as you were, you know, running and you know you heard the support and you know your only focus was to run how did what were you you thinking as everyone was cheering you on well at the start of the race like coach patrick he he was literally coach like in soccer he coaches me throughout like the mm -hmm. race or the game and at the start he was like he shouted ollie get out of the blocks fast so like i like i was sprinting out the blocks and then i settled into my pace and then like dotted all the way around the track was like members of the team and they were just like motivating me, like keep going, keep going. And then for the last 60 meters, because that's like the most physically like tasking part, um, coach Patrick and Carl were just shouting at me to keep going. Because I feel like if you're running that by yourself, it's a lot easier to either slow down or almost give up. But when you've got your team supporting you and cheering you on, it gives you that extra push. And you know, Aaron Patrick, not only your soccer coach now also helping you with track, that, that's mm -hmm. super nice, you know, you're comfortable with him. So that's, that's great that, you know, that you can have him yeah. along your side for this. Um, so it, really early in the track season, you know, you're already breaking a school record, but other than that, or maybe it is, what's been your favorite moment of the season so far? <laughs> My favorite moment of the season, it's a funny story actually. Um, 
for my first track meet at Trine, um, I ran the mile, and that was coach Patrick who ran the mile too. And um, <laughs> Rustin um, to, said to me, if I beat coach Patrick, he would buy me a f Jimmy John's, <laughs> so I would get a free Jimmy John's. <laughs> <laughs> so like training throughout the week, like me and coach were training together for the mile. And when it came down to it, like I, because he's a very, he's very fit. Mm -hmm. I was just literally running right on his heels all the way around <laughs> for the last, I would say 90, 80 meters. And then I just like ran past him. <laughs> all I could think was like, right, free Jimmy John's. I've got this free <laughs> Jimmy John's. So like I was just sprinting and I finished. I think I did it in like five minutes flat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was pretty good. So you ended up beating him then. Yeah. Then you got the free Jimmy John's. Yeah, like two days later, Rustin gave me a free Jimmy John's. <laughs> Did it taste good? Yeah, really good. Good, good, good. <laughs> um, so kind of, you know, going off of that then, you know, it's still really early in the track season. You're brand new to this. What are you most looking forward to? Not even just for this season, mm -hmm. just in general, assuming you do track again in the future. What are you most looking forward to with track and field? I think I'm most looking forward to now actually setting goals to achieve. Because I achieved, I wouldn't even say I have achieved a goal because I never set that goal for myself. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's just kind of happened because of hard work and just from running basically. So I think setting goals and being able to strive for them and train in a way that like you're striving for something rather than training just for fitness, I think that'll be pretty cool. And you know, you, you had that mindset before, you set a goal, you broke mm -hmm. a school record. We'll see what you do in the future. We're yeah. excited for that. For that, any final uh, thoughts, comments, inspirational quotes you want to give? Um, thoughts, I'm just very happy and lucky that I can be part of the soccer team and the track team. Um, comments, I would say that being, being able to break a school record and having that recognition is very, feels very important to me. And inspirational quotes, I would say, I think the key is work hard because like, you can achieve high stuff if you keep working hard. Very inspirational right here. <laughs> Ollie, thank you so much for your time. Once again, congratulations. Thanks, and I'm Tanner Camp with Ollie Smith here on 574 Sports. Kind of heard about the application for uh, you know signing up to be the station manager. I figured it was a good opportunity to take more responsibility uh, as someone at the radio. Just since I had done radio my first three years, I figured. I kind of know the ins and outs by now and, and I kind of want to run the show. In terms of my on-air schedules, I made sure that they were all kind of in the morning and kind of out of the way of Tuesday mornings, that's when our early practices are, so I tried to get some stuff that didn't get in the way of baseball and then, you know, whenever the globe needs me, essentially I have to kind of make it work. I would say for the globe, my favorite part is um, probably just being an on-air DJ and, and going to some live shows as well at Ignition, uh, that's always fun. Getting to listen to the new music that doesn't come out to people yet, to kind of listen and critique it and put what we like on, the, uh, on air. My favorite part about playing baseball is the guys that I play with and the coach that I play, the coaches that I play under. Um, the group of guys, I'm going to remember them um, until the day I die, so... Uh, that's certainly the best part about playing baseball at college. Same with the Globe. I love the people I work with at the Globe. I love the music that gets played at the Globe. Uh, I have a large part in the kind of music that also goes onto the Globe as well. So it's pretty fun to balance what I like with what the Globe is because sometimes it doesn't always mix. Uh, my name is uh, Jim Doherty. They call me uh, JD. I am the coach of the men's volleyball team here at Goshen College and uh, assistant coach for the women's volleyball team. Um, we are, are super excited about getting this started this year. We are a club team and we're hoping that we can take this club team into an official varsity sport next year. I mean, I've been working with JR for four years. It's been it's an excitement. It's an exciting thing to start a program from scratch. And I'm so excited about getting this started. I've, I've played men's volleyball before in the past, and so I'm excited about getting this started here. And it's really fun to watch these guys. They're growing left every day, left and right, so it's fun. 
men's volleyball is, I mean, it's such a different beast. I mean, it's bigger, faster, uh, nets higher. So uh, using the women's game for this, women's game, you're, you, you play defense. Men's game, defense is played with a block. You don't play much of a chance because once the guy hits the ball, it's to the floor. So it's, it is a different, different thing. Uh, I guess from JR, uh, having fun, uh, learning to be some, uh, patient, I guess. Uh, making the practices fun, except for like today, it wasn't so fun. We focused on the fundamentals. We're, we've got some first year players, basically kids that came off the campus and tried out. So we're, we're working with them. We have some recruits on, the, on this team that we've, we're working with. But basically it's working on the fundamentals, working on team play, understanding the game, the speed. Um, that's what we're working on now, which will carry into next year. I mean, they're, they're great attitudes. There's some really nice natural leaders on this team as well. They all get along. Um, they're here working out every day. They show up at practice. They're, they're, they're busting their tails to make this work. And that's showing. And if, you've, if people come and stand in the windows here and watch, they're seeing it. So there's a lot of elevation. Um, if you've been here the 1st of January and see now, the guys are jumping higher, faster, uh, hitting the ball harder. Um, you know, guys have got some injuries on their thumbs because we're hitting the ball so hard. So it's, 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 it's going to be, it's fun right now. It's exciting. Welcome to 574 Sports. My name is Tanner Camp, and to my left here we have senior basketball players Devin Heath Granger and Christian Greider. They are this month's 574 Athletes of the Month, the first time that we are doing this. We're recognizing them uh, and a bunch of other seniors. Devin, most well known for his passing, on pace to break the all-time career assist record. Christian Greider, a very well-known three-point specialist around the Crossroads League, and they are here with us today. Guys, thank you so much for your time, by the way. No problem. Thank you, Tanner. How does it feel to be this month's uh, 574 Athletes of the Month? I mean, for me, the most exciting part of this is kind of just being a senior my last go around it's kind of nice just to have some recognition I know for our team right now we're not playing the best but I know these guys definitely make it easier like you said pass first for me it's a lot easier to get assists when they make shots so I mean it's definitely honored and I thank you guys but like I said last go around it's kind of fun just to kind of have stuff like this going into my last last couple games yeah I mean kind of like Devin said it's nice being a senior that you kind of see that hard work that work that you've put in not only the last four years you know before that just to get here to Goshen so I think it's just a cool honor that we appreciate you guys to uh, show us too so we, we appreciate that and it's it's definitely well deserved I mean you guys have put in a lot of effort and the entire Goshen College of history is going to remember so you both kind of had you know you've been roommates forever you know each other better than anyone else what was your mindset this season, knowing that it's your last chance to make a name for yourself? What was your mindset going into this season? I kind of think you hit it right on the head, just making a name, not only for ourselves, but just to remember in Goshen College. I think we've been here long enough, and kind of something cool that we've never really done is like individually left our mark. So I think this is a great opportunity for us going in our last year. I know We've talked about different accolades since our freshman year, and to see them kind of coming to life now is something that just cool and something we've never been able to say before. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. You know, just coming into the season, I think one of my biggest things was, you know, it is that last year. We've all been together here for, you know, three years, and coming to this last one, I just want to, you know, make those memories again that we can, even with you guys, the younger guys, just get those memories that we can have for the rest of our life and, you know, foster those relationships with people that we can too. It's always nice to win games, but at the end, at some point, that's done. So those things will last as those memories and times you have with your teammates. So And many memories you guys have definitely made on yeah. the court and off the court, yeah, and again, both. remembering those for a lifetime, basically. So what did you guys, uh, each individually, I don't know if you did stuff together, if you did stuff on your own, uh, what would you? What was your? Uh, what did you do over the summer to get ready for your final season here at GC? Yeah, for me, I didn't really do anything too much drastically different than I've done in previous years. I kind of stick with the same routine. I've really gotten to gym a lot. I even coached an AAU team this summer, which kind of got me mentally prepared and seeing stuff from a different side of view. But for me, I kind of just stayed in the gym, worked out, and but for me, it's also finding that 
good line of working out and then still finding time to spend time with your family and stuff because that's not something I get to do often. So for me, I didn't do too much different. It was nice just to kind of stay in the gym and kind of stick to what I know best. Yeah, for me, um, I stayed here in Goshen for the second summer in a row because I did an internship in Mishawaka. But I think that just allowed me too to focus a lot on that and then come back at night and just kind of go lift and work on basketball. Kind of being away from home from that standpoint, there's not many distractions that you have. You know what I mean? It's things you can do. So I think that really helped me be able to focus on basketball and getting bigger, stronger, and stuff like that. So. And again, with all the work you guys have put in, it's definitely shown this year. A lot of people have recognized that. So great stuff over the summer. So we're, you know, at the kind of the near ending point. How would you say that for this season, even in terms of, you know, actual games, practices, even stuff outside of basketball in general, how would you say the, 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 the team chemistry is within everyone on the team? Yeah, so for us, I think the biggest thing we've been able to sell ourselves on since we got here is the team chemistry. I know I talk to a lot of guys at different programs, and the thing they say they lack is like the brotherhood and family. And for us, that's never been the case since I got here. I mean, we, we've had years where we've won a lot of games. We've had years where we've kind of been inconsistent. But the consistency off the court is just never really changed. I know from the day one I got here, Coach Young at the time, but now Trelf really sells the brotherhood aspect of it. I think we really rely on that and we really live that to our fullest. I think so, that's something that um, – you know, since our freshman year that Devin and I kind of talked about is that once we became seniors and, you know, those leaders on the team, that we wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody felt like they were a part and not anybody, you know I mean, felt left out off, off the court, on the court. You know, it was kind of that brotherhood, and I think that's something that we've tried to foster, not only now, but the past couple of years and still, you know, a couple of games left in the future, so. And that definitely shows, you know, you guys hang out all the time, not even mm -hmm. just like individual members, like the whole team mm -hmm. at some point. And it shows that there really is that love of brotherhood right. that will, right. again, last forever, basically. Right. Um, near the end, and where I normally I would ask what your favorite moment of the season is, but we're going to make this even more interesting. What is your favorite moment of your four years here at Goshen College? Or it can be from this season, depending on uh, what you're thinking right now. Wow, so, I mean, that's a tough one, but I – kind of would have to say just like the relationship I've had with him, Christian, and Connor, who's also another senior, Billy, who's another senior, that we've kind of been here all four years, and Connor and I, and this is our, with Connor, our second year in a row, mm -hmm. rooming together, so it's like you spend every day with somebody on and off the court, and we've had millions of laughs and just late nights of just kind of sticking up and just kind of being able to just be brothers in that mm -hmm. moment is definitely something I will never forget is all the good laughs and good memories I've had here. Yeah, I think we've been blessed with the kind of senior group that we've had. I mean, I know I have. I'm lucky that, you know, I got all these guys to spend these last four years with and something I know I'll appreciate, you know, for the rest of my life. And not even from that memory, I mean, there's games that I know, the, I mean, last year we beat number one St. Francis in the country. And it was just the way that we felt that game. All the seniors, like, you know, we were a big part of that. And we all were going crazy, you know. I had a big N1. Devin was over there jumping up and down. We still got video <laughs> of it, you know. Just things like that. I think that it's something that I'm going to remember the most just because it's, like, these guys that, you know, I've lived with and people like you I've been friends with since you've been here. Just things like that. I think that, you know, I'll really appreciate when, you know, 30 years down the road when I think about remembering my time here at Goshen. So. And definitely a lot of great memories from what it seems. You know, not one individual one. A whole, the whole mm -hmm. four years is memorable. And right. that's that's great to hear. You know, exactly. obviously you've made the most of your time here at exactly. Goshen. So with the final few games left, and even for you guys, the final semester, what are you most looking forward to during your final few months, basically, here at Goshen College? Um, For me, just to make the best of it. I know the season hasn't been going the way we've wanted to lately, but I think we can't really dwell on that. We have to look at the positive and we only have a few more few more games, few more months with the group of guys we came here with. So just every day, practice games, doesn't matter really what we're doing, really cherish those moments and really live those moments to the fullest because that's all we have left. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with what Devin said. You know, we only got six or so games left. You know, you want to make sure that you don't leave anything behind. You want to not only leave your mark, but you also want to just appreciate the time you have left. You know, we're at a point where we have to make a run and that's something I think that you know, we'll always remember, like, if we do that. I think that's something we need to appreciate and do now, make that run and uh, keep our season going. So Absolutely. I think that, that's mine. So And definitely, you know, I mean, wanting to keep the season alive, mm -hmm. but, of course, enjoying, you know, the final time oh, yeah, soon, you know, with graduating and yeah. everything. But, again, great. Are you looking forward to how everything finishes yeah. off? So with that, do you guys, either of you have any final thoughts, comments, inspirational quotes that you want to give? 
Um, not for me. It's just thank you guys again for this. I know it's something that we really do. We really talk about. We see all the videos and something that we're just honored to be a part of. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it's nice that not only you know we get honored for this, and then we also get one, you know one of our teammates to be able to do yeah, it definitely. and be the person that gives it to us. I think that's something that you know we appreciate the people, everybody here at 91 won the Globe. So we appreciate all that you guys do for not only us but for everybody and then the whole you know, athletics community here at Goshen. So. And for me speaking for myself, we can definitely appreciate all the hard work yeah. you guys have put in, all the great things that you do, mm -hmm. and this is why you guys were chosen as this uh, month's 574 Athletes of the Month. Guys, thank you so much for your time. You, Always thank a pleasure. You. See thank you around. You. I'm Tanner Camp here with Christian Greider, Devin Heath Granger, here on 574 Sports. Welcome to the Bullpen. I'm Anthony Bultzero from Maple Leaf Athletics, and I'm here with the Maple Leaf baseball coach, Alex Childers. Thank you for coming out today, Coach. All right, so Coach, uh, what is your playing and coaching background? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so I graduated in 2007 from Olivet Nazarene University. Uh, I played baseball at both Goshen College and Olivet Nazarene University. Uh, I got a business degree from Olivet. I wouldn't say that I knew I was going to go into coaching when I first uh, started playing college baseball, uh, it just kind of happened that way. So I got a business degree, uh, worked and lived in Chicago, and uh, uh, about a year after that, I got a call to uh, be an assistant baseball coach here at Goshen, and uh, two years after that, I became the head coach here. All right. So uh, how would you describe your coaching philosophy? Um, we're a player's first program. Uh, I think that's something that I kind of took on right away, and I wanted to be about the players, not uh, – about me or anything besides just them. Um, so philosophically, everything that we do is geared towards the players. We want to enjoy have uh, enjoy the game, enjoy being around each other, and working hard towards a common goal. Okay. And who have been some role models for you over the years as a coach? Um, man, I I think when you look back, uh, a lot of just in general is shaped by the people and mentors that you're around. You know, my high school. Uh, baseball coach, uh, the two coaches that coached me in college, um, and then I think we're pretty blessed within the conference. There's there's some awesome coaches within the Crossroads League that um, that I look to, um, and, and I think just having that fraternity um, that you belong to, that you can uh, bounce stuff off each other um, is, is a huge impact, and then I mean, our coaching staff, I, I really enjoy Coach Grubb, uh, Coach Doug. They, they're, they're awesome guys to be around. Um, and when you get guys that are in it for the right reasons, um, it, 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 really it really helps the program pro uh, progress. Um, it, just, just having guys of like minds together. And uh, what has shaped your coaching philosophy? Um, I, think, I think those guys um, having a focus on something that's that's beyond just the game of baseball, too. Uh, and we talk all the time about developing guys beyond their four-year playing career here. You know, like what does that look like? What's it like to be a man? You know, like like what does that look? Try to play that out um, for the guys as best we can, um, and, and for them to see that there's more than just baseball. It's important because we pour a lot of time into it, but it can't be our just sole identity. And uh, since you've been a coach here, do you have any memorable stories you could share with us? Oh gosh, I mean, too many to count. I think <laughs> I think like every season, there's uh, there's stuff that you look back on, and you do you, you remember more than just the games or the wins and losses. You remember those those memories. Um, I mean, even looking back in my first year, uh, a young guy that you know, self admittedly, I didn't I didn't have a clue what was going on, and the results right. weren't great in year one, but just how regardless of the win-loss, how you can still have an impact on guys, how you still, you know, as crazy as that sounds, to look back fondly on a year that was, you know, didn't turn out in the win-loss column as well as we wanted, and to see it kind of progress to, you know, where it was last year. We had a good run at the end, um, but, man, 
I, there's probably too many stories to, <laughs> to pick one out. And uh, speaking of last year, uh, last year the baseball team had its winningest season since 1995, and uh, we've lost a couple key players to graduation. Uh, how do you think this year's team compares to that team? Um, that's a good question. Last year's group was really, really special. I think um, just in the fact that they were guys that said yes to Goshen College Baseball when results hadn't been there, oh. and to see uh, that, that group of guys, especially those seniors, that poured so much into it when we weren't truthfully very good, uh, to see us in one game away from playing in the, uh, the NAI opening round was really kind of cool. Um, but to compare this team, I really like this team. I enjoy coaching this team. Uh, they're, they're a group of guys that kind of have a hunger and a desire to get better. Do we have some stuff to replace? Yeah, I mean, we had some key contributors last year that, uh, that graduated and moved on. But, but overall, I, I really do, I think the sky's the limit with this group. Um, they have as good a work ethic as any that I've coached. You know, they, they intrinsically, they want to get better. They push their teammates um, in, in the same way that they push themselves. And when everybody's kind of pushing each other and there's co natural competition within practice, it makes everybody better. To say how it compares when we haven't played a game yet, it's tough to say. Um, we're going to have to find a way to get guys out and we're going to have to find a way to make up for some runs that got produced by those graduating seniors. But uh, it'll be exciting to see how it shapes up. <laughs> and uh, you've brought in 12 freshman ball players this year. How do you think these guys are going to fit in? I mean, there's always an adjustment, right, when yeah. you get new guys that come in. Uh, I'll say this about our returners. Uh, they do a really good job of pulling those guys along and making them feel uh, included, inclusive, apart, not uh, us versus them. Um, and that's something that we tried to instill, you know, in my time here. It's like, hey, look, we're, we're all working towards a common goal. Seniority isn't really a thing that's talked about within our program. You know, we're all together first year to seniors. Um, we're all a part of this team and a valuable, valuable part of this team. Um, but out of those 12 freshmen, I mean, there's we lost a lot of innings on the mound. Um, while we return a lot of position players, we lost a lot of innings on the mound. And uh, there's a chance for some of those freshmen um, and some of those younger guys that didn't get maybe as many innings last year to kind of step up. But that'll be, a, that'll be a big test for us. Can we get guys out, right? And can guys that haven't pitched and thrown innings at the college level or volume innings at the college level, can they be efficient enough uh, to keep us in ball games? Because I do, I think our offense, um, when we lose a little bit of firepower um, and guys from the left side, we have the ability to keep the line moving um, and score in a variety of ways, which I think should be exciting. Okay. And uh, what are your expectations for this year? And do you have any like goals you want to achieve throughout the year? I think the biggest thing is is just keep building on, on where we've kind of taken it. You know, and Coach Doug always has a saying. You know, he, you know nobody's laughing at us now. You know, we first started this thing. I mean, there were some yeah. rough spots. You know, everybody's looking forward to Goshen being on a schedule. Uh, I don't think that's the case anymore. Um, I think that uh, I don't want to say we're force that's not that's necessarily the term, but everybody knows that hey, when when you got Goshen on a schedule, you're going to get a feisty group. Uh, a never say die group, a, a group that's going to compete and uh, grind, keep going no matter what. And uh, you know, it's really easy to kind of talk process over results, but I, it, you know, if you look at the track record of what Goshen College Baseball has been in the past, you know, five years, it's what it is. It, it's the process. Hey, can we do things the right way, and the results will take care of themselves. Uh, so goals. Um, yeah, I mean, we want, to, we want to play baseball for as long as we can. We want to be in the conference tournament. Um, we want to make a run just like we did last year. And I, and I don't think it's a bad thing to vocalize and say, hey, yeah, we want to be there. We want to be playing. We want to be one of the last two teams playing in that conference tournament. Um, and, you know, being a game away last year, uh, we want to get there. When you pour, pour yourself into it, um, it makes it that much tougher to, you know, quit or let that, let that slip through your fingers. So I'm excited about the year, um, uh, and the best part about baseball is it gets decided on the field. You know, you can write all you want up on paper, hey, we look better here, we look worse there, or what have you. You got to go on the field, you got to throw it, you got to catch it, you got to hit it. <laughs> well, thank you for coming out, Coach. It's been yep. a pleasure. And uh, that wraps up today's bullpen session. Thanks for joining us.
Thanks to Coach Childers for sitting down with me. Now we turn our attention to the Diamond as we take a look for the upcoming schedules for February. Starting off for softball, NEI leadoff tournament will be starting on February 2nd and ending on the 3rd. Then they will go down to Arizona for the spring break trip starting on the 24th. And for baseball, the season opener will be in Pikeville on February 18th. Then the team will go down to Georgia on the 24th. And that's what's coming up for baseball and softball. Join me next month on the bullpen as we discuss a bit more in baseball, all here on 574 Sports. When, when it comes to living well, healthy minds and bodies are as important as this community. That's all the stuff we have for you on today's show. We thank you for joining us here at 574 Sports. I'm Laura Hoover, and for the team and myself, we bid you a great day.